muted. Good afternoon, Arkansas, and welcome to Survive the Zombie Apocalypse. I'm Jason Eilenfeld. Um, instead of sharing my webcam, which can sometimes slow this down a little bit, I thought I would put a picture of myself up there so you can see uh, who's talking on your end. And we're going to hop right into this lesson. So uh, Survive the Zombie Apocalypse, we're looking at geography skills. And you guys, just so you know ahead of time, you guys are all on mute right now. Um, and I may open this up for questions here towards the end, but I want to keep it to the half an hour that I promised in the beginning. So let's hop in. Survive the zombie apocalypse using your geography skills and engaging students to be inspired to learn more about geography. So this lesson is actually from our 10-unit series, Zombie-Based Geography, which is found in Active Classroom. Uh, Active Classroom is a digital platform. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. This is going to focus on the types of human migration, causes, push and pull factors. Uh, we're going to look at how you can really engage the students and draw them in and get them wanting to learn about geography, all in the, the context of this zombie apocalypse, the world is ending, there's a virus spreading, um, kind of exciting for the kids. Zombies is a pretty big thing right now. Uh, kids are really, really into it pretty heavily. So we're going to look at uh, geographic understanding through an inquiry-based collaborative project. Now, these 10 units are broken into multiple lessons. I've sent you one lesson, or, or actually it's a combination of uh, two parts of two lessons. I was able to create the PDF from Active Classroom, and I sent it to you guys ahead of time so you can follow along uh, with us as we go. So I'm going to kind of jump around. I'm going to start out with this PowerPoint, and then we'll actually go live into Active Classroom, do some of the lesson together, and then I'll also take you to Stratologica, which you also get a free 30-day trial to uh, look at how we can extend this lesson and really engage kids with this great visual uh, program that allows students to go in and add content and really customize. Uh, so here we are, uh, the Arkansas Geog uh, Geography Standards and the Inquiry Arc. The strand we're going to be looking at is human systems. The content standard is that students will analyze the characteristics, distribution, and migration of human population and settlement on Earth's surface. Um, and it'll focus on HS 4.G.3, analyze various push and pull factors that led to migration, and analyze the impact of effects on migration on society. <clears throat> So I thought we'd start out with some compelling questions. When you look at the inquiry arc, uh, one of the big things that goes along with it is th these compelling questions that kind of guide students. What are the things that are going to draw them in and get them to really think about what you're going to be studying? So I came up with these two compelling questions that, that can kind of draw kids into this particular topic. So what drives people from where they grew up? that's something that they can relate to. What, you know, what are the things that, that drove people to move from where they were born, where they grew up? And what drives people to a particular place? Uh, supporting inquiry questions, uh, do people always move because they want to? Have your parents ever moved you or do they talk about moving? What reasons do or did they give? Uh, do you think if it if there was a major deadly virus, such as the Z virus or the zombie virus spreading, you know, what, what would drive people to, to move, obviously. All right, so I'm going to hop right in, and this is actually from the zombie-based geography. And this is an image that I took from the graphic novel that goes along with this. Uh, this graphic novel follows this, this young student and she is talking with her teacher, and he's a geography teacher, and he's you know, trying to engage her and get her inspired to learn geography, but she starts hearing about these strange occurrences going on all around the world, and she starts asking questions. And he says, well, hey, that's a great project idea. And in this particular part of the graphic novel, uh, he's saying, you know, figuring out where this virus will spread is really important if you have to learn to escape this virus and where are you going to go and resettle. 
And so he gives her this assignment. He gives her a map and a population density map of the United States. And she begins to look at mapping out you know, where population centers are and start looking at some of those things. And then the comic book continues and goes through you know, what types of resources uh, would you need. And that's kind of the same arc as this 10-unit program from zombie-based geography and active classroom. So mapping migration, um, we are going to, you guys are going to be getting the 30-day trial to Stratologica. But now I'm going to take us live into, hop out of this here, I'm going to take us into Active Classroom. And so we're going to come up here and we'll go right into the lesson. So in this particular one here, this is on zombie and human migration patterns. And the ones that we are looking at here are the push and pull factors. So from the table of contents, I'm going to hop over and go to push and pull factors. So when I click on this here, we will be able to um, go right into it. And I think it may have logged me out here. I've had this pulled up for just a minute. So um, log out and then log back in real quick. It'll just take a couple seconds. OK, so now I come back over here, log in, and we will go right back into zombie-based geography. Apologize for this uh, little delay, but sometimes things happen when you go live. So um, I'll go right to here. You can see actually all of the different titles of the different units. We've got mapping, uh, the outbreak, mapping safe and unsafe regions, mental mapping, surviving the physical environment, natural resources, and then human migration patterns, which is the one that we are currently working in. So you guys can follow along right there with the lesson that I sent you in advance. And we're going to look at push and pull factors. So what are some of the pe reasons people moved? And that was something that I posed in our compelling question, kind of guiding this whole inquiry. Um, so push factors. These are the reasons that people move away from a location. And pull factors are the reasons people move to a location. Uh, locations usually have a mix of push and pull factors. So here are some examples. And I'm going to send you guys a, um, a PDF as well that has these in, a, in a, like a handout format that you can use. So push factors. Well, if there are not enough jobs in a region, that will push people away. Opportunities goes along with the same thing with jobs. Famine or drought. We saw that issue and we saw that during the Great Depression uh, where people moved in mass numbers out of North Texas and Oklahoma and moved towards California. Uh, poor medical care can sometimes push people out, especially if they're needing it. Uh, loss of wealth, if they lose money, they may be pushed from an area. Uh, natural disasters, we saw that here recently, I say recently, um, going back quite a few years actually to Katrina, there was a mass exodus from Louisiana, people moving away from there after um, the Katrina hurricane. Uh, lack of political or religious freedom, so when people are oppressed, or um, if, they, if they can escape. I mean, we see examples of this, too, with uh, North Korea, people trying to flee and escape there. Um, pollution, that's something that can drive people away from a place. Uh, poor housing or discrimination for whatever reason could be ethnic, it could be religious, different things like that. Or war can obviously push people away. So we have this nice graphic here that goes along with that to kind of make those connections between those different types of push factors. <clears throat> now we move into pull factors. So kind of correlating along with those push, uh, the push factors, we have job opportunities. So it may push people away from a per particular area, but it may pull people to a specific area if there are job opportunities, better living conditions, political or religious freedom, uh, enjoyment, if there's better education, better medical care, nicer climates. Uh, you saw a lot of people uh, here in the United States moving, and this still goes on, moving to the Sun Belt, especially as they reach retirement age, looking for something nicer. You know, why is California so heavily populated? Uh, the attractive climates there, you know, San Diego, uh, Los Angeles stays around 70, 75 degrees all the time. And some people really are drawn to that. Or maybe some people really like snow, so they move to uh, the Colorado Rockies so they can go skiing. Um, security. 
security just not feeling safe, looking for a safer place they can move, be pulled to an area. Or family links, maybe family lives in a certain area and that's what draws people there or possibly certain industries and I guess that would really tie in with the job opportunities. Um, and better chances of marrying. Uh, in some cultures, some, some countries, uh, you see, especially when you get to China, where they have limits on the number of children you can have and how girls uh, are not seen as highly desirable and there may be fewer women. And so men or men may be driven to other countries to look for, uh, you know, better chances for marrying. And again, there are some great images that go along with this. We can see the connections for education, family, uh, freedom. Uh, you know, maybe some opportunities or that might be a resort there, it might be climate, um, and then of course hiring and, and medical care over here on the left-hand side. So what are some of the reasons that people move? And this goes along with, um, goes along with that there, the push and fill pa uh, pull factors, the directions, and so then for your activity or the activity you would have your students do, it says following the zombie-based geography activity uh, may work best are conducted as a group activity in your classroom. You can also complete the activity on your own with the following instructions. You can post any discussion elements to active classroom discussion forum. For this exercise, you will choose one number from the table below and two locations, location A and location B. You will identify the push and pull factors of each location and write them in the spaces below. Please ask your teacher for additional instructions to complete this activity. If it's assigned to you, review the push and pull factors. Discuss as a group to identify push and pull factors of each location and be ready to share your ideas with the class. And so for uh, just for the aspect of time and wanting to keep this into a smaller area, what I thought we could do is, you know, you might look at, let's go with uh, group two, or maybe you can assign this to your class by number and give seven different groups. Uh, you can also assign this individually like it suggests, but it might be fun for kids to work more collaboratively and generate ideas and you're inspiring that, that collaboration where the kids are bouncing ideas off each other. Oh yeah, this, this might be good here because of this, or I know this about this country, or I know this particular situation. It's just having students working in groups can be really nice to, to build on this idea and it helps drive this whole inquiry arc. Um, you know, it gets them discussing, gets them thinking about it on a deeper level. Um, so in this particular one, we might choose um, number four, Cairo to Bangkok, and having the students brainstorm ideas of what might be some of the push factors in Egypt. You know, what have, what have been some of the things in the news? And you can expand this to then a research project, and you can go in and find things. There are great resources in active classroom readings where they can go and find information about Cairo or Bangkok, and also look at the history. You know, historically, why did people move? Or you can send kids out on you know kind of a guided teacher search. But then the students would list, and you could you could list this out on that PDF that I sent to you in advance. Identify the push and pull factors of a location. Um, are the pull factors, identify the push factors, and same thing here. And in active classroom, the students can actually go submit for review or they can save their progress if they don't finish during a class period and move on to, uh, move on to the next thing. Then the exit ticket that goes along with this right here, it says you've learned about the different reasons people move, reflect on what you've learned and answer the questions below. So the kids have to provide some specific pull factors and some specific push factors, some examples of these. Uh, so this is what the students would then turn into you as kind of an exit ticket at the end of the day or something for an assessment. And then of course this all ties back to this zombie-based geography and the kids are then thinking about, well, how, you know, this is, this is obviously a push factor from major population centers. People are being pushed out because of this disease, because of this virus. And then the students can then go in and look at, you know, some settlement patterns. They can then look at population density maps. And that's what I'm gonna pull in here in a few minutes with uh, the stratologica portion is maybe having the kids map out those 
heavily populated, heavily dense, uh, you know, dense population areas, and then kind of predicting where populations will move, or in the case of zombies, where will these zombies spread? Where will they move out? How is this virus spreading? Where is it going to go next? And then looking at the pull factors, well, what areas are going to be the safest? And that's what this, this unit kind of prepares students for. Um, the unit before focuses on natural resources that you need for survival. And so what draws kids to uh, that, you know, that particular region, what natural resources are going to be a big pull for that. And so this ties in with that as well. So then we move into um, the next section here, which is applying um, settlement geography. So then this is kind of the big here. This is the big project that students are going to work through in this unit. And it says the following zombie-based geography activity may work best conducted as a group. Again, talking about this, for this exercise, you will choose one region to research, uh, numbers 1 through 10 from the map below. Review what you've learned about my in this project. Next, you will identify your chosen region centers of population uh, and population density, and then answer the questions in the spaces provided. Ask your teacher for additional instructions to complete this activity. So the students then have to go and research these particular regions here. They list the region that was assigned to them. What are the population centers? So they're having to identify the population centers. And you're going to see how this, this intertwines with stratological when we go in and look at an actual map identifying those populations, heavily uh, dense populated um, areas. And so then do you think your region would be able to support more people? And then having to really answer that question, and this gets kids thinking. Remember, the whole inquiry arc is driving kids towards really discovering learning for themselves and really getting into un really understanding what is going on. So um, then from there, the next part of this, they're actually building a, a poster with this. So they take all of this information that they gather from here, and they create their poster. And with this, my idea actually is to then take Stratologica, so a little bit different, a little bit different approach rather than a poster, maybe using Stratologica to outline and highlight this region, and then using the different maps to build a presentation versus a poster. And you're going to see what I'm talking about here in just a minute. Um, so then they're going to go in and they, they build this poster, they build this project where they show all of these different things. And then the, their exit ticket here is going to be, um, you know, what are some of the major population centers, push and pull factors, and what are types of migration. So this is their big exit ticket at the end after they've done the poster, after they've worked through all of these different lessons and different activities. So I, I hope you, um, you've been able to follow along. Uh, a couple of things, a couple of PDFs I wanted to share with you. Um, this zombie-based lesson here that I sent to you guys in advance. Uh, I thought you guys would really like this here, looking at, you know, what is internal migration? That's moving within the same country or state. What is external migration, moving out of a country to a different country or from a state to a different state? Um, and then we look at, I'm sorry, I skipped over it. And I know the PDF kind of cut it off, sorry about that. But emigration. That's leaving a country, so giving kids that specific, and then it gives them a visual to go along with that. So leaving a country. Or immigration, which we hear most about in our country, and that's, that's people moving into or entering a country. Then we get into a little bit heavier topics here, looking at population transfer. Population transfer is all about large groups of people being placed by a government policy, um, this example here is Israel and the occupied territories and looking at the Israeli population and the Gaza Strip and the West Bank, and you can go into the whole history of that as well. Uh, but there's, it gives that nice map. You could talk about uh, something that really connects with Arkansas, and that's the, the Trail of Tears and how it was that government policy um, you know, that, that really forced that population transfer. Um, of the Indian, the Cherokee uh, Native Americans through Arkansas, and most of them, you know, some of them settling in Arkansas, and a lot of them moving out to uh, to Oklahoma. 
So forced migration, that can also tie in here with this. Uh, this is the, the best example of this is going to be uh, slavery in the Americas and that forced migration there. You could also talk about current events with human trafficking or maybe some uh, development projects. Uh, step migration. And so step migration is also interesting where they're moving from maybe a rural area, then they're maybe moving to suburbs around a city, getting acclimated and then eventually moving into an actual city. And so that's moving kind of in steps, uh, kind of acclimating to each area as you move along and going into that chain migration. Uh, this right here gets into, um, you know, chain migration is when somebody moves from another country and then maybe some other family members then follow along or people from the same neighborhood. Uh, they move to a new, another country, then they hear about it. Oh, it's going great. This is awesome. We can see wonderful examples of this in our own American history and the rich history with Ellis Island and Angel Island and the massive amounts of immigrants that came here to this country to settle and how a lot of neighborhoods then, and then you could even talk about uh, that, that kind of pull factor, you know, people moving into a particular area, then return migration. That's when somebody moves back to where they used to live. So they move to a particular area, then they miss their home or, you know, various push or pull factors, then push those people back to or pull those people back to their home. And then, of course, seasonal migration. We see this all across the United States, especially in heavy farming communities uh, where people will move for a particular season and they will work fields, they will participate in that, and then move on to another area, maybe another opportunity of migration. And then this goes into that creating that poster for the different types of migration. And there are the instructions that you can use with your class, and then some things providing examples of internal migration, immigration, impelled, seasonal migration, so the students are answering those questions. They can answer right here on this PDF that I've provided for you, uh, for you to use. And then it goes into what are some of the reasons that people move, and it goes back to that theory of migration that we were talking about. And I've got this great, um, it's actually a Word document, or I'm sorry, this one is a PDF that I'll send to you, and this is Lee's theories uh, on push and pull. And so these are just some of the, the overarching, the larger push and pull factories that we've already examined a little bit. But I'll send this to you as a nice handout that you can give to your students. And then I also have this uh, nice Word document that I thought would be really interesting to share. And this, this really highlights, it's a nice infographic that looks at um, origins and barriers of migration. And it looks at, you know, the first first migrants, their barriers, and then the basic information, and they've migrated to their destination. Then they send their basic information back to the second group, and then the second group comes in, and there are some barriers, and it's a little bit easier this time. And then they network, and they build a network within that new community that they founded, and so then you have a new group, the third group comes to this destination, and there's more networking then this fourth group. And so it's a nice infographic that shows how, you know, the first migrants encounter these barriers, then they send back some information, then there's networking that takes place, and you have a population moving here to this. And so then you have this great piece down below, kind of a key for you, uh, or a legend that shows the first migrants, the wife and children, then closer relatives, then friends, and then the increasing information flows. So you'll notice that the arrows up here, you know, small amounts of information initially, then it gets larger, and then you have a lot of information going back and forth with this network. And when you start getting into the close relative then inviting their friends, and then you have this much larger, this increasing flow to a destination. So I'll send that to you guys as well. I just think it's a really nice infographic that I found and I thought it would be nice to go along with this lesson and a great topic. You might even give it to the students and just say, hey, I want you to look at this infographic and decode it for me. And that's, again, you know, that tying in with that whole inquiry uh, approach, looking at, you know, an infographic or looking at something and then really analyzing it after they've been given their background information from this whole unit, they then have to be able to explain this infographic 
it's a really, really nice way to build on, on that whole idea there. Okay, so from Active Classroom, and we've done, our, we've looked at migration. I want to show you what I've then done, and I've sent you guys a link to this, and um, this is going to zoom in here. I'm going to zoom back out, and I'm sorry, it loads a little bit slowly with uh, Active, or with, I'm sorry, with um, GoToMeeting running here, but I want to show you guys. I've outlined Arkansas on our base map. And so I drew my little lines around. Sorry, it's not absolutely perfect, but you can see it here. And then what I've done is created a multi-slide presentation similar to a PowerPoint. And I'm just going to click through these slides, and I'm going to click onto the next one, which is looking at population threats. And so what I did was I overlaid a population density map on top of that political map that we were looking at so we could find the major population centers. And again, I apologize, it does load a little bit slowly when I'm running uh, GoToMeeting from, from my office. But we're looking at these colors and these images, and you notice that something really big is missing, and that would be the map legend or the map key. So I'm going to open this up here, and hopefully you guys can see this come in, and you will see the colors decoded for your students. So we're obviously looking for the major population centers. So I'm going to click here on this dark purple. And it's going to give us this nice image that explains that the dark purple represents a densely populated area, over 250 people per square mile. So when referencing and thinking about this zombie virus and this outbreak, where do we need to worry about? Well, obviously, if it breaks out into these population centers, and it spreads like a lot of other viruses or diseases that we've seen uh, across the country and across the world, population centers are the biggest hit. And that's where you have the most danger from these diseases and these viruses. So going back to that whole idea of you know, the zombies, let's look at another view of the population threat. So I thought wouldn't it be fun to go in and maybe have the kids track and look at how the virus spreads, and maybe kind of looking at other diseases around the world and how those diseases have spread and at, at what pace and what distance. And so as this image comes in here, I'm actually going to go to our little toolbar down here at the bottom, and we have this great little measuring device. And so we're going to look at distance. And so let's look at Little Rock, Arkansas. So from wherever you are in Arkansas, I'm just going to click on the population center here. So I'm going to click one point. And then let's go over here to the southwest corner of Arkansas. No, let's change that. Let's go up to the northwest. I know I've got some people from the northwest that are going to be um, they're going to be joining in on this or either watching the recorded webinar a little bit later. So I'm going to put this here. And you can see from Little Rock to the northwest area, approximately 218 miles. So if we go from that idea and we look at how long will it take to spread, uh-oh, but well, we have something else going on, don't we? We have this spreading here from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and our neighboring state. So we'd have to watch and see. And on top of that, you'll notice this dark orange color. This also indicates a little bit larger population density. It's not quite as dark as maybe some of these regions over here. Um, I don't know if you can see my mouse or not, but I'm clicking on um, these areas around over in Alabama and uh, maybe down here by Austin, Texas, over on this side. So we can measure distances. And notice I put these circles around. So all I did was come in here to the drawing tool, and I chose the circle. And so you can draw different colored circles as well. And for this one, let's look at maybe week two. I can put that circle in the dead center again. So I click there, and then I'm going to draw the circle out. And so we have the initial week one, and then we're looking at maybe week two. You can also do other types of patterns. You can do um, polygons. You can do squares, and you can draw straight lines or squiggly lines as you move out away from there. So that's kind of a fun way to do this. Uh, then we can also go in and look at land use. So when we're looking for a place to settle, 
let's look at Arkansas and let's look at how land is being used in Arkansas. And so from our population density map, I've switched the view to look at a land use map. And so this land use map is going to show us how land in Arkansas is being used. And so um, I went in and it's loading very slowly, I apologize. Um, you can see over here in our map legend, I'm going to open that up. And all I did was copy from the previous slide, I just hit copy slide to add this in. And you will see that all of my information from the previous slides have carried over. So um, we look at, obviously there's urban populations. Uh, then we look at commercial farming, which it looks like a lot of this northeastern side here, down in the southwestern side. Most of the eastern side of Arkansas is available for commercial farming or maybe even subsistence farming. I put the little hand plow up there to represent subsistence farming and the, the bale of hay or the wheat to represent the more commercial. And then we have the ranching and herding, so we can click on that and we can see an image of what ranching or herding looks like. So we've done that, we've looked at uh, Stratologica here, and then we can also move on and look at elevation. This will help kids be able to start to think about, you know, where should I settle? How should I escape this virus? What would be the safest place for me to go? And then what resources would I need in order to survive? Well, I'm gonna need to be able to farm. I'm going to need to be able to maybe have access to livestock or have access to fishing. And so I've got the, I didn't put fishing along over here. I should have done that as well. Um, and then of course you've got the forestry down here south of Little Rock. Um, so we've worked through this activity and there's a lot of things that kids can do with this. In Stratologica, they can build these. You can do collaborative projects where you assign this, you know, your seven groups that you were looking at, looking at push and pull factors, maybe rather than doing a poster have them go in and find those regions or find those countries and actually draw arrows and put in uh, a push pin down here where you can take a push pin and you can add in here, uh, you know, for this particular region, I'm gonna type this in, we're gonna give it a title and we're gonna do uh, push factors uh, for Arkansas. And then they can list out their push factors down here. Maybe they will even find some relevant videos. Maybe they'll find something on YouTube that looks at um, maybe the Trail of Tears or something like that uh, that they could put in the video for looking at uh, push factors or, or pull factors. What draws people to Arkansas? You can talk about uh, major industries and you could talk about things like you know Walmart is, is a big draw for that, uh, the northern part of, of Arkansas there. So you could put something in, kids could put a push pin in there, add types of information and they could save this, but they're all working together. And so um, I've closed the push pin and now I'm gonna click on it and we'll open it up over here. Sorry, I'm gonna close this. And now I'll click on my push pin. <clears throat> Oops, I'm sorry, I need to probably switch it over to the display. But anyways, it will open up in a box over here. I'd have to change it over to display, and I'm not gonna mess with that right now because I know we're running very short on time and I've actually gone over a little bit. So I'm gonna hop back over here to my PowerPoint, and I'm gonna go from this current slide and we're gonna finish this up here. So each of you are going to receive a free 30-day trial to Stratologica for attending. That's that mapping program that I showed you. Uh, let's look at how we can do that. We just looked at that. And now let's talk about, uh, since we're out of time, I'm not gonna be able to question, but I wanted to go back to that inquiry arc and looking at this, and this is from the Arkansas curriculum document. Uh, did we see evidence of each of the following? Uh, construct compelling questions, so we did that early on. Supporting questions, we had those as well. Did we answer some of those compelling questions? We absolutely did. Did we look at sources and consider multiple points of view? I believe uh, the students would be able to do all of those things, especially using Active Classroom with the thousands of different resources that they have at their fingertips that you could assign for them to look at and go and investigate. Um, did they gather relevant information from multiple perspectives? A variety of sources, they were able to do that as well. Um, did they gather or use evidence? They sure did. Uh, claims and counterclaims. 
Uh, did they construct arguments? They did that in their poster. Uh, did they convey ideas and perspectives? They did. Um, did they, using print, oral, and digital technologies, of course, they're going to address all of those things. Uh, did they critique the credibility, relevance, and use the evidence and arguments uh, that is part of their presentation and their defense of their poster is posing those arguments and explanations. Uh, did they use disciplinary lenses? Did they look at this through the social studies lens, social science lens? Lens? Did they look at some of the regional or global problems? Absolutely, those are things that they are doing uh, while applying deliberative processes. So yes, these are all things that they touched on as they work through this, this larger project and this inquiry-based inquiry, inquiry -based project. So does this look like a project-based unit that you could easily implement in your classroom? I hope so. I hope the answer is yes for this. Um, can we now answer these compelling questions? What drives people from where they grew up? Well, we saw all of those push and pull factors. So we know a lot of reasons why people move from where they grew up um, and what drives people to a particular place. So from this lesson, they looked at you know, what drives people to a particular place. And obviously, in this short webinar, we didn't get to explore as much as the students will be able to do. Hopefully, you will take this lesson. And feel free to take this PowerPoint that I will send to you. Um, you can cut out slides. You can add things to it, add some images. If you are interested in Active Classroom, please contact me. My, uh, my information is right here. Uh, we do offer Stratologica and Active Classroom bundled together. Uh, it's a little bit more than the active classroom price, but you get a really nice discount when you combine the two programs together uh, if you're looking for purchase. So I hope that you guys are interested. I would love to talk with you some more. I would love to delve more into the zombie-based geography. Thank you for those of you that were able to attend. Uh, for those of you that could not attend the live recording, I'll be sending that over to you a little bit later this afternoon. Actually, I'll send it to everyone so you can go back in and view the recording and get in and take a look at this. Thank you guys so much for attending. I appreciate you being here and I appreciate you being a part of this. I'm going to head, go ahead and end this now. So thank you guys so much for being here.